The Novena to St. Alphonsus Liguri Hello friends, it's another day of the global online Novena to St. Alphonsus at RMC. Congratulations to each one of you who are participating in the spiritual journey with us. Do let us know in the comment section from where you're from and along with your special prayer intentions. Today's Novena is led by the province of Bangalore, India. A lively performance by the youth of Holy Ghost Church, Bangalore. Followed by this, we have our very own Father Joe Abraham from India who will guide us in a profound reflection on the topic evangelization in a secular world. As we come together in faith, let's open our hearts to this message, learning how to effectively share the good news amidst the challenges of our modern secular society.
Dear friends, to this Alfonsian novena, and I invite you to journey with us with the life of Saint Alphonsus to see how it inspires us and moves us to be better Christians. The theme that we are going to reflect today is evangelizing in a secular world. Somewhere around Easter, most Catholic Christian magazines, as well as secular magazines, made big headlines about something that was happening in France. About 12,000 people embraced Catholicity. They took baptism, of which around 7,000 were adults and 5,000 were young adults, youth. Something very remarkable to see people turning back to the church in large numbers, uh, which was very new, uh, more than 30% increase in people who were opting to become Christians. And uh, in and around Paris, this was the big news. A recent study says that about 80% of young French do not have, have not received religious education and are ignorant of the church. Yet, when big established institutions like family and many others have failed, they are seeking for a true identity, a belonging, somewhere where they can claim to be their own. In 2018, with the pre-synodal meeting of young adults which took place in Rome, the young adults themselves came up with this document which made the statement saying, lot of young people have lost true trust in institutions, have become disaffiliated with organized religion and would not see themselves as religious. However, young people are often spiritual. This popular saying, I am spiritual but not religious, has somehow captured the world. Well, everyone has a spirituality. Everyone does have a fire burning deep within their hearts. As uh, Father Ron Rolheiser would say, it is either a life-giving spirituality or a destructive spirituality. Long before religions could take over human beings, we always had that fire that burns deep within our hearts. The whole big question is, how do we fan this fire? How do we channelize it to make sense out of it? Even this phrase, I am spiritual but not religious, makes big sense when we look at it from a wider perspective that everyone has the divine spark deep within their hearts, where God speaks to us, where we encounter the divine and where a major transition is made. Speaking of all this, I would like to take you to the life and background of Saint Alphonsus. When Saint Alphonsus was at his ministry, at the start of his ministry, there was this big group called as Jansenism, founded by 
a popular priest, Cornelius Jansen, the Bishop of Ypres, uh, a former professor of scripture at Louvain, he came out with this theory saying that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was only for a select few and not for everyone on the earth. In some way, Jansen also confirmed with Calvin, Calvinism, which was also a major popular theory at his time, which said that right at the beginning of time, God selected a limited number of souls to grant salvation. And there is nothing that the others can do to alter their eternal destination. Well, people believed in this. And it was a very hard situation for the church. Much later, the church openly condemned it. Pope Clement XI openly said that Jansenism is against the foundation, the founding principles of the church. In this situation, many believed that only a few could be saved. In fact, it's interesting to see that Jansens had their own image of the cross. We see in the cross Jesus with arms outstretched to welcome everyone into his fold. But the Jansons had their cross in which Jesus had his arms upward to say salvation was limited to a few. In that situation, Alphonsus steps in to make his difference. Alphonsus was a very talented man to say. He was a musician, a painter, a poet. But what is most significant of Alphonsus is he used every single talent of his to draw people closer to God. He was totally disturbed by the fact that only a few can reach the heart of God. No, that is not redemption. That is not the purpose of Jesus coming down to this earth. That is not why Jesus died on the cross. It is for everyone. He speaks of a universal call to holiness. That all of us are children of God. That every single person who responds to that fire burning within their hearts have the grace to be saved. And that is the big difference that Alphonsus made. He wrote against Jansenism. He fought against this particular theology of his times to tell people that we are all saved. And that was the big difference that Alphonsus made. He says, God wants everyone to be holy, everyone in their own state, religious as a religious, layperson as a layperson, a married person as a married person, a merchant as a merchant, soldier as a soldier, so on and so forth, speaking of every other state. Alphonsus says, everyone can be holy. Everyone can reach the heart of God. Everyone can respond to the call we received at baptism. And that makes his presence marvelous, his contribution unique. Alphonsus doesn't stop there. He saw that people were not coming to the church. Christians, Catholics, baptized, stayed away from the church. So Alphonsus decided to take the church to the people where they are. Not to force them, not to coax them, but to carry the church to where the people were. And the unique contribution of Alphonsus is this. He founded the evening chapels for the Lazaroni, for the most miserable. These people included the simple soap makers, masons, barbers, carpenters, dock workers, porters, and other workers. He went to their place, created circles, spoke to them, helped them to pray, taught them devotions. Oh, the, the popular devotion, sacrament, um, visits to the blessed sacrament that most of us use. He wrote for these people in particular who could go and sit and pray with Jesus, who could go and have that fire in their hearts kindled to have a unique experience. Was it successful? Yes. By the end of his life, there were 72 of these chapels 
and with over 10,000 active participants. A movement which is alive till today. And that is the spirit of St. Alphonsus. He preached popular missions and wanted the language to be simple. Right from the north to the south, he went around in, in Italy, gathering people, speaking to them, telling them of the love of God and bringing people back to the church, evangelizing in a highly secular world. What can we do? What is our call, you and me today? When people are against the church, it's not just the structured hierarchy of popes, of bishops, of priests. It is each one of us who make the church into a watertight compartment, who look down on others, who think we are elite, we are blessed, we have something special because of our baptism. No, everyone is called to holiness. And that is what we have to radiate to others. I'm reminded of one particular teacher who I had at school when I grew up. It was a Catholic school. About 20% of us were Christians. But this math ma teacher in mathematics, Mr. Romald, made it a point in every class to speak about God who reaches to our hearts. In some way, he kindled that fire. And something very distinct happened. At every break, we had a small chapel in the school. I was surprised to see a number of children who used to gather there silently to pray. For Christians, it was a chapel with the Blessed Sacrament. And for most of them who were non-Christians who gathered there, it was a prayer hall, a place where could, they could find peace at heart, a place where they could unite, identify that spark deep within their hearts. My dear friends, this is evangelization. Getting into the institutional church takes a long way. A journey which we carry forward, journeying with them, seeing the presence of spirit in them, working with them, and it's, it's a long process. But to see God speak to everyone's heart is what Alphonsus did and we are called to do. We seek his intercession in this Christian journey of evangelization. Amen. The Daily Novena Prayer St. Alphonsus, friend of the poor and herald of the good news of plentiful redemption, journey with us as we seek to become spirit-filled missionary disciples of Jesus Christ today, especially to those who are marginalized in society and the church. You are the doctor of prayer. Teach us to pray unceasingly. You love the Eucharist. Teach us to draw ever closer to Jesus in the Eucharist in order that we may be food for others on their journey. You were devoted to the passion of Jesus Christ. Help us to accompany those who suffer and who walk the way of the cross in their daily lives today. Through your preaching and writing, you gave people a greater knowledge and appreciation of the divine truths. Accompany us as we explore the great truth of the mercy and love of God and to share this with those we meet along the way. You loved music, art and the beauty of God's creation. Help us to see beauty in the world and the people around us and to care for creation, particularly earth, our common home. God of love and mercy, you continually build up your church by the lives of your saints. Grant us grace to grow in faithfulness to our given vocation in life and to follow St. Alphonsus in his loving concern for all people, a concern that bore fruit in action. Walking in the footsteps of this devoted servant of yours, may we be filled with a desire to spend our lives in a joyful service of the most abandoned, whether they may be in our own homes, our communities, our church, or our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful As we gather to honor St. Alphonsus and seek his intercession, let us confidently bring our prayers before God, trusting in his infinite mercy and love. Your response? Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that the Holy Spirit may guide Pope Francis, our bishops, our priests, and all the faithful to live out the Gospel with courage and conviction, inspired by the example of St. Alphonsus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth of the province of Bangalore, that they may be filled with the wisdom and strength of the Holy Spirit, and through their efforts the love of Christ may be known and experienced by all they encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that through the intercession of St. Alphonsus, they may grow in faith, hope and love, and be places of peace and joy, reflecting God's love to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, that they may find comfort and healing in the compassion of Christ and be supported by the loving care of our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our reflection on evangelizing in the secular world, that it may inspire us to deepen our faith and put it into action in our daily lives, following the teachings of St. Alphonsus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for our personal intentions. In a special way for all those who are participating in this novena. For the intentions that have been brought forth to the Lord. In a special way too, for all those young people who have participated and contributed for this novena, we pray for their intentions as well. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer today through the intercession of St. Alphonsus. Grant us the grace to live faithfully and serve you with all our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer of Petition Dear Saint Alphonsus, obtain from the heart of Jesus, our Redeemer, the graces necessary for our spiritual and temporal welfare. I recommend to you in particular this favor. Mention your request in silence. Saint Alphonsus, pray for me and those I love. I have great confidence in your prayers. I earnestly trust that if it is God's holy will, my petition will be granted through your intercession for me at the throne of God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Alphonsus, noble man, who laid your sword at the feet of Our Lady of Ransom as a sign of your conversion, pray for us. Saint Alphonsus, friend of the poor, who shared all you had while living in need yourself. Pray for us. Saint Alphonsus, practical organizer, who used your creative energy to spread the gospel, to feed the hungry, to found the Redemptorist, and to shepherd a diocese. Pray for us. Saint Alphonsus, you have said, Whoever says this little canticle from the heart causes joy in paradise. Let us pray. Jesus, my true, my only love, I wish for nothing but you. Here I am, I am yours, my God. Do what you will with me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Amen. Amen.